Welcome to BizTech's APAC Ambassador Conversation Series. Today, our conversation is with His Excellency Michael Reifenstuhl, the Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Korea. Now, welcome to the show, Your Excellency. Many thanks, Brian Fernandez, for the invitation. Pleasure to be here. Now, Your Excellency, before we start, let's get to know you a little bit better. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career prior to taking up your current role? Um, well, I don't know how much there is to say there, but um, so I'm one of um, what we call career diplomats. Mm -hmm. So I started 27 years ago um, in, in our foreign service. I have served now in, in, in a couple of countries, um, like for example, um, uh, in the United Kingdom, in, um, in Egypt, but also, um, uh, for example, I was at the very beginning, this was still in war times in, in Sarajevo, in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, and the past posting uh, before I came to the Republic of Korea actually was um, Turkey in Istanbul. Um, perhaps one, two uh, mentions on, on my, uh, my person, my family. So we um, are three kids. They are all grown up. They are actually in, in Germany, so they, they are not here with us. And, and one um, specialty in our family is actually that my wife, she, she's also ambassador and she's the German ambassador to the Philippines. So we are um, a couple of ambassadors. Nice, so I'm sure that that has presented some challenges uh, in terms of scheduling and where you live over the years. Absolutely, I mean, as long as the kids were with us, we always were posted together. Um, now, um, when uh, the kids are grown up, we are a little bit, if I may say, um, more grown up. So we were simply um, tasked with the challenge. Um, does one of us um, want to join the other one, but then he has to stop working for a couple of years? Um, where I have to say, as a modern family, um, we both said uh, we would like to continue. So we decided simply to commute. Um, to be frank, the decision, that's the first time that we are doing it was taken in um, 2018 pre-COVID. So the idea was simply to go back and forth between um, Manila and, and Seoul. Um, COVID um, didn't make it much easier in, in the last two years. Let, let's put it this very simple. I'm sure. Now, Ambassador, over to your, your, your role here. Could you start by sharing with us the state of diplomatic relations mm -hmm. between Germany and South Korea? Because not many people realize how close the relationship is and also the shared experiences of division that has brought both your countries together. Mm. Um, Brian, you mentioned actually, I think one very special bond between uh, the Republic of Korea and Germany is that we um, both have the experience um, of a divided nation. Germany had, um, you know, the, the luck of um, and the strike of history, the lucky strike of history um, that we could um, reunite the Republic of Korea um, and um, on the Korean Peninsula, unfortunately not. So this is one bond, what simply is a very emotional bond um, and, and it gives um, a very special touch, if I may say so to the um, Korean-German uh, relationship. But then there are also some other um, areas um, where I think um, it's especially um, the context between people, people to people context uh, between the societies give us a strong bond. For example, after the um, Korean war, there was um, sent um, um, a field hospital um, to, to Busan, the second biggest um, city in, um, in, in, in Korea. And there there were German um, nurses, German doctors uh, working for a couple of years. And this also gave um, a very um, intensive um, experience um, for both countries. And um, by the way, we still, there, there was, a, as it is always, a couple of marriages, a couple of um, Korean and Germans learned each other. So we still have um, family bonds where now the second and third generation actually um, has the as the um, shared heritage um, of, of um, their parents being at the field hospital. And perhaps a third point, what I think is um, um, very important to mention, in the um, late 60s, early 70s, when we had the, the so-called economic uh, miracle of the Rhine um, in Germany, we were in, in, in dire need um, of um, good uh, workforce and there were actually um, around um, 7,000 um, Korean nurses coming to Germany, working there. 
but not only nurses, um, also um, approximately 10,000 miners that were in, uh, in Germany working, Koreans. Um, and this um, is perhaps the third dimension, what really gives a very um, special people-to-people -people, um, um, relationship um, um, between Korea and, and Germany. Now, could you tell us um, how the changes in um, Germany's foreign policy uh, have come about under your new government? And of course, how you feel that President-elect Yoon uh, uh, will basically then, then um, engage Germany a lot more because he has indicated he plans to upgrade relationships with Germany. Um, indeed. Um, first of all, um, the, the German-Korean um, relations, um, they are for many years now very good, very intensive on, on various layers. Um, as I mentioned already, people to people, but then also on the economic side, on the research side, um, on the um, cooperation also, for example, in the um, educational um, and scientific um, field. So they were very intensive um, with the current government. And indeed, uh, when um, I did have um, a meeting with President-elect Yoon a couple of weeks ago, he indicated um, that um, he um, would like to intensify um, also the German-Korean relationship in a couple of fields, especially um, in, in the field of economy, but also um, science um, and research. Where I think in both countries, we are innovative. Um, we have many new technology that we need to, um, to, uh, to tackle challenges, global challenges like health, like climate, like environment. And I think um, Germany and Korea, um, we can work very closely um, together. But not only this, um, if we look, for example, to the, to the um, Russian war of aggression um, in Ukraine, mm -hmm. we could see that uh, Korea is one of the countries that really was fully supporting the approach of the international community um, to condemn um, what uh, President Putin uh, was doing. But they didn't stop there. They also joined um, the sanctions regime and they also joined uh, supporting um, Ukraine in, in various um, manners. And this is also um, um, something where we um, are very confident um, that once President-elect Yoon will take office, um, he will not only continue, but also intensify work. So one aspect perhaps besides the whole area of um, economy, um, besides the whole field of science, is also um, that we are both countries, um, we, we call it um, partners of value. That means we, we share um, many um, values, democracy, rule of law, um, freedom of press. Um, what gives a, a very solid, um, a very solid basis for our um, bilateral um, relations. And what is also very important for the German government, also the new German government, um, because we indicated in our so-called uh, Treaty of Co Coalition, when the new government started to work, that actually Korea is one um, of um, the countries in the, in the Pacific um, region where we want to intensify our relationship, not only because of the economic weight of Korea, but also because it's a real partner of values. And, and speaking of the economic way, could you tell us what the bilateral pic trade picture today is? So um, actually, um, Germany is uh, within the European Union, um, the, the, the biggest trading partner um, of Korea. So the, the trade volume is um, approximately um, 30 billion um, euro, where we could say uh, two thirds, roughly, roughly two thirds of it are German exports to Korea, and, and one third um, is actually is um, Korean um, exports um, to, uh, to Germany. And there, is, um, there are a couple of um, areas um, that are really very, very um, intensive in the um, trade relations. Um, just to mention um, two, three, one is clearly the um, automotive sector. Um, German um, automotive um, brands, cars, they're, they're very popular uh, in Korea. Um, but it's not only that, that we sell um, German cars in, in Korea, it, it's also a, a two-way um, cooperation. For example, if you go to the field of um, electric vehicles, I mean, you may know that um, Korean companies are very, very strong um, in the field of um, EV batteries. Mm -hmm. So for example, we also have a couple of German car makers actually that are German brands but they are also using um, um, EV batteries um, from Korea. But there are other areas like, for example, um, pharmaceuticals, um, what is a very um, important and also dynamically um, 
growing um, area. Um, we have also in, in, in the field of um, health cooperation. Um, um, it, it is a, a new modern field. And then all the, um, the um, as we would call it, strategic economic um, areas uh, where we have a lot of cooperation like um, semiconductor. I mean, you do know that Korea is very uh, important there, um, as I mentioned, um, EV batteries. And to speak a bit of future technologies, we do have um, a lot of cooperation of also small and medium-sized business from the German side, also with Korean companies. In, in the fields, for example, like artificial intelligence. That's interesting because, so has Germany's Mittelstand uh, invested in Korea as well? Yes, um, uh, absolutely, um, they do. I mean, actually in both ways um, uh, it's growing. Um, in, in former times, it was more um, German um, investment um, in, uh, in Korea, but now in, in the recent couple of years, we also can see um, an increasing um, in investment of um, actually of um, uh, Korean companies um, in Germany. So it's uh, both ways. So, so we do have uh, a couple of hundreds um, actually um, companies um, that, um, um, that do uh, own German companies that do own um, companies um, in Korea. Um, um, it's, if you would take it in, in the view of employment, um, it's, um, uh, it's more than 100,000 actually um, uh, workers, Korean citizens that are actually working for, for German um, companies. So um, um, Germany is, is one, it's not the biggest, by the way, of um, European investors um, in, in Korea, um, but it's in, in a very substantial um, number, um, a couple of hundreds actually, in investments where German companies are um, in the market in Korea. And, and who are the biggest investors? Uh, you mentioned automotive, so I would guess the likes of BMW and Mercedes would be the natural thing, but and also pharmaceuticals. Um, could you give us some some names, perhaps, of German companies who are heavily invested in South Korea? As I mentioned, um, and let me also be um, specific, um, we do have um, more than 500 German companies that are actually um, currently um, present um, in, in Korea. Um, they are in the automotive, electronics, machinery, chemical, steel, shipbuilding industry sectors um, as well. And this is um, also future um, technologies, um, software, um, fintech finance um, services. Uh, if I would mention, um, for example, in the automotive um, one or two, then, then I surely um, would, would have difficulties. The important point really is um, if you take, um, let's say, um, the four or five biggest um, German car brands, they are all, they are all very, very strong um, in the um, in the um, Korean um, market. Um, so so it's, it's difficult just to single out one, but also um, in other fields, um, if you take, for example, um, the chemicals, yeah, um, and BASF, um, a German um, mm -hmm. chemical um, giant, um, for example, has a very strong um, foothold, but also in the field of machinery, especially machinery, what is the strength of um, what you called um, in German Mittelstand, yeah, so um, small and medium-sized enterprises. We, we have many um, hidden champions, as we call them, and sometimes in the field of machinery um, that are actually um, very strong um, present in the, in the Korean market. And just for example, um, to mention, um, um, you may know for the semiconductor um, production, um, ASML is providing from, from the Netherlands, is providing um, these um, machineries that are indispensable. And there is also, um, what many people don't know, um, there is German technology is indispensable um, from Carl Zeiss for example. So this is sometimes not really known to the public, but um, because of the, um, of the high quality, of the high precision um, of German um, machinery, um, they do have a very, very strong um, foot um, also in, in, in this kind of um, economic fields. Michael, where do, do German companies see opportunities to invest and collaborate with Korea and vice versa? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, we do have the traditional fields, um, but now um, we also can see uh, many of the um, new um, emerging um, areas. Um, and, and this um, uh, goes from, um, from um, fields like um, artificial um, intelligence, but for example, um, also in the field of um, 
um, material research. Um, so for example, for, for, for airplanes, etc. cetera. Um, and there is um, good, strong um, um, cooperation. Um, but then also um, aside from these fields, um, for example, we have seen one of the, of the German um, in investments or of the biggest investments from a um, German company was actually in the um, field of um, food delivery. Um, in Korea, it always was um, very um, popular, but like in most other countries, because of COVID, um, food delivery really uh, saw um, a, a huge boom. So um, it, it's difficult to um, single out one or two, um, but um, if I would um, try to, to show a trend, uh, it's especially also in the um, in the new emerging markets and also in the in in, in the fields where um, we will have um, future importance, um, as I mentioned in in science and research, but also in the whole fields. Um, what is um, for our future very important? Um, if we speak about the challenge of um, climate change, so also for example in the field of uh, renewables. Um, there are German companies um, that have a, um, a strong um, a lag um, here in, in Korea. And this is something that we also consider important as to um, jointly simply tackle um, climate change. Now, Michael, one of the things you stressed a couple of times during the interview was the connection between people as individuals. Could you share with us how Germany engages South Korea from a cultural education and arts perspective? and vice versa. Many times actually um, during the COVID pandemic, um, I, was, uh, I was deeply impressed um, because here in Korea, actually there was never a time of a complete um, lockdown. So, and I personally, I'm, I'm a fan of classical music. And so I was going um, quite often from um, time to time to um, classical concerts. And there I realized, um, many um, Korean um, outstanding um, professionals in the field of classical music, actually they were educated in Germany. If you go vice versa to Germany, um, it will be difficult to find any, uh, any um, symphony orchestra or any opera house without Korean um, artists. So um, the, the field of arts is, is one, I think of the um, most um, important legs we do have in our people to people and contacts. And this is not only um, uh, due to, um, due to um, classical um, music, if you would ask my kids, of course, they, they would mention um, other things like um, K-pop, BTS, Bl um, Blackpink. I mean, you know, they are so immensely popular worldwide. And, and so it is um, also in Berlin when they had a couple of years um, the first uh, concert in Berlin, I think it was in five minutes, um, um, all the tickets were, uh, were sold out. So um, it's in the field of arts, in, it's in the field of uh, culture, um, but also modern art. Um, if you are um, walking here around in, in, in the streets in, in Seoul, it's fascinating to see how many, um, not only galleries um, that are supported by the state or run um, by the government here, but also private galleries where you find modern artists that are um, collaborating with, with German artists um, that have been for a couple of months of years um, living in Germany, that have um, partly also um, worked together with German artists. So in, in all um, these kind of fields, it's, it's an amazing, um, it's an amazing um, intensive um, relationship. And I think this is something, um, especially in the field of, uh, of culture and arts, what, what, what is always a driver for both um, societies. We have a couple of formats that actually, um, where we look into how Germany managed um, to, uh, to do reunification from an economic aspect. Uh, that this was a huge challenge. And this is of course um, of, um, of interest um, to, the, um, to the Korean government, how we managed uh, in the aftermath of the reunification, the financial, um, challenges, the economic uh, challenges, but also um, the social um, challenges. Uh, Michael, because obviously there is a lot to learn and, and the hope obviously is that the, the Koreans will be, uh, Korea will, Peninsula will be reunified. Is that an ongoing um, uh, exchange between both your countries? Absolutely. And on, on various layers, we do have this exchange um, on um, government to government level. So um, um, officials, um, for example, from the uh, Ministry of Economics in Korea with their German counterparts and they meet once a year and um, to look into specific um, challenges um, that we experienced in German reunification. 
but also on um, on a um, level of society. We do have um, since um, 2002 the so-called um, German um, Korean Forum, what is actually um, a mixture of um, of personalities um, from um, government, politics, political parties, um, but also from um, culture, from arts, from society, from science, from research. So the whole the whole spectrum um, actually of society, and um, they do meet. Um, normally once a year, they sit together and select specific topics of common interest and then also define, for example, where we can in future um, strengthen the, the bilateral relation. And um, actually last um, autumn, um, for the first time after COVID, um, it could be done um, offline, um, um, as we call it. And I was very impressed. They now also do have a, um, a youth forum where actually young leaders um, from, from Korea and young leaders from uh, Germany, from the various um, sectors sit together. And it was very interesting to see how also this um, next leaders generation, how they do have um, their own topics, their own um, also many um, issues of society, um, how they were discussing this and how they also tried um, to learn from each other. And that's the basic importance to learn from each other. Um, we, have, we have a lot of areas where also Germany can, can um, benefit from the Korean experience. Now, Michael, looking ahead, uh, we're in 2022 now, we're starting, global economies are starting to open up. Obviously, there's storm clouds. Uh, in the horizon because of the war with Russia and Ukraine and, and um, other economic factors. But what are you looking out for and what are your government's priorities in 2022-2023 to, uh, to engage with the, uh, South Korea? Um, the new German government, um, as I mentioned, outlined in their um, so-called coalition treaty, um, first of all, that um, the Indo-Pacific guidelines um, that the previous German um, government concluded for the first time uh, in Germany, uh, um, overall comprehensive um, concept, how uh, we want um, to approach the ever more important, ever more dynamic Indo-Pacific um, region from a, a policy and point of view. They confirmed um, that um, and these policy guidelines um, will continue to be valid, that they will be um, implemented. Secondly, um, um, they outlined Korea as one of the four countries uh, in the um, Asia Pacific region as partners um, of value where we want um, to um, intensify the relationship. So this goes um, over the whole um, spectrum of um, politics, um, also economic um, policy, financial policy, but also into new areas. Um, um, if you look, for example, um, security cooperation. Um, I think um, the, the Russian war of aggression in Ukraine um, has made clear um, that it is also important, if I take this from a German, uh, from a European perspective, um, that on the European level, um, uh, we want to intensify um, the, the, um, the security and, and the military cooperation of the, of the European Union. Um, you might have seen that also um, Germany as a response to the um, to the um, Russian war in the Ukraine um, has, has um, substantially um, supported the, um, the um, Ukrainian government and, and various fleets, um, including um, also um, to assist um, with weapons. So if I sp uh, speak of the security policy field of the military field, last year in December, um, by the way, for the first time since 18 years, there was a um, German frigate in, 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 um, in Korea, in, in, in Busan. And the signal um, of this visit um, um, was um, to show that we also want um, to engage um, in, in future stronger in the, uh, in the Indo-Pacific um, region. Our Indo-Pacific guidelines, they are not directed against one country. They are not against one country. But at the same moment, it's important to say it's a reaction um, to um, the behavior um, of one country, um, what we would consider um, as um, more um, assertive, um, as more aggressive in the region, if we look to the um, South China Sea, mm -hmm. to other areas, um, but also here on the and uh, around the Korean Peninsula. So we also want to make clear to our partners here in the region, also to Korea, um, we want um, jointly 
and demonstrate that issues like um, freedom of navigation, um, the rules of the sea, what is very uh, important also to Germany as a um, trading export nation, um, we want to um, intensify our cooperation um, with countries um, like Korea. It's been a fascinating conversation. Before we leave, any final words you'd like to leave us with? First of all, um, of course, many, many thanks for the opportunity um, to talk uh, with you, Brian. Um, this was um, fascinating. Um, I think um, what after nearly two years of experience here in, in Korea, what became um, clear to me, being the first time, by the way, posted in, in, in East Asia, um, very often Koreans say um, we did learn a lot from Germany. I'm always responding to them. Um, it's, it's not a one-way street. Um, Korea is such a thriving, innovative um, powerhouse. Now one of the 10 biggest um, economies worldwide. Um, so one of the really um, very important experiences was it's also um, us, Germany, we can learn a lot from Korea. So it's a real two-way street. Thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show, Ambassador. Thank you. I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to His Excellency Michael Reifenstuhl, the Ambassador of the Federal Republic of Germany to Korea on BizTag's APAC Ambassador Conversation Series. This video and podcast will be on our various social media platforms, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thank you very much for tuning in.